Hebrew kingdom building. All right, y'all. So the Torah portion for today. Oh, can you take it back? Who can tell me what is the name of the Torah portion for this week? Arya. That was last week. <laughs> Good guess, though. It's from the book of Vayikra. David. No, not Bami Bar. Shannon. Sav. The Torah portion for this week is Sav. And um, who can tell me what that word means? It's a Hebrew word. And it means, I see Nekam, Nekam Yahoo's hand. What does it mean? Command. That's right. It means command. And who remembers from last week what we talked about as far as the, um, the words of the Torah portion, the name of the Torah portion, why it's named that way, Obi? Can. It's related to the first few words in that Torah portion. All right. So, again, the name of the Torah portion is Sav, which means command. All right. All right, so this Torah portion was about the ordination of Aharon, or Aaron, and his sons, the priests. So who can tell me who was their forefather? Who was their forefather? Yes. Levi. That's right. Levi was their forefather. All right, so Leviticus chapter 6, verse 7 says, So the priest shall make atonement for him before Yahuwah, and he shall be forgiven for any one of these things that he may have done in which he trespasses. So uh, this chapter was basically, um, or chapter 8 rather, was basically about the, um, the priest getting ordained so that they can actually do the job that Yahuwah had for them. And one of the big parts of the job that Yahuwah had for them was to offer up sacrifices. So that's so amazing that that's what we've been talking about today. Um, that's an appropriate slide. It's not mine. But, <laughs> but it's to offer up sacrifices. So um, he is, Yahuwah is so told. As soon as Moray said, I'm um, going to talk about sacrifices today, I was like, wow, Yahuwah, you are so told. He said something when he opened up, and I was like, man. He said, um, I wrote it down. Oh, yeah, he said, um, everyone wants a relationship with Yahuwah, but all of this is built off of sacrifices, right? So what, these are some of the animals that were sacrificed. So you had the bull, you had the, the sheep, you had the goat. Um, if you were to just speak in plain words about what is a sacrifice, what would you say is a sacrifice? Or to sacrifice something, what does that mean, Rasan? Exactly. All right, so we're going to look at the definition for the word to sacrifice. Can you click the next one? Oh, so, oh okay, we'll wait for a second. All right, so Rasan said to, what'd you say? To give up something, right. So <laughs> sacrifice means giving up something you value for the sake of something else you consider more worthy. So we've been talking about sacrificing and sacrificing to Yahuwah. So what that looks like is that you're giving up something that you value, something that you think is really important or something that you care about, but you're giving it up for the sake of something else that you consider more worthy. 
So when you consider Yahuwah more worthy than that thing that you care about, you're able to sacrifice it. So my question would be, my, my question would be, I should give you like a, is it coming? It's not clicking? Oh. Oh, okay. Do I need a way? All right, so, so real quick, have you had to sacrifice anything since being in this walk? Benaim, Bano? Absolutely, yes. Anybody not had to sacrifice anything yet? Not yet? Okay. So, so you know what sacrifice means? You give up something that you value for Yahuwah. Okay. For some, yeah. yeah. Offering something to Yahuwah, yeah. So I would, I would actually venture to say that you guys have had to sacrifice because during Shabbat, right, you give up your, your time, right? So you sacrifice your time for Yahuwah. That's something that you sacrifice. Yeah, things that you had to stop doing. Yeah, that's considered a sacrifice, yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, Tim, yeah, say it one more time. Uh, my bad, man. I think I got it this time. All right, so, oh, you have Zuri? You had to stop watching TV on Shabbat. She had to sacrifice TV on Shabbat. That's what Zuri said. Yes, y'all didn't. You had to sacrifice the foods you used to eat. Uh-huh. Unclean foods, yes. One more, Arya. Tablets, mm-hmm. Sometimes you have to sacrifice time on your tablets. Okay, Mari, you last one. Selfishness, you say? Yeah, being selfish. Mari says she had to sacrifice being selfish. So I want you to think, what are some things that I've had to sacrifice in, since being in this walk? And if you can't really think of anything, then you might need to, you might want to pray about that. All right. All right. Oh, so this next slide. So another, um, I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. Let's go to the next one. So where were the sacrifices placed? Where uh, I need a, a Benaim or Bano. Yes, Uzi. On the altar. On the, I know. They were placed on the altar, right? And if you read in Leviticus chapter 6, verse 13, it says, On the altar, a fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. So how does the song go? May the fire of my altar never burn out. May the fire of my altar never burn out. May the fire of my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. Right. So now we kind of have a little bit deeper understanding of what we're talking about when we sing that song. So the fire of the altar is, shall never burn out. So that means that it is continual. It keeps on going. Okay. Now, that also means that they had to continue to burn sacrifices on the altar, okay? So, because the fire was never burning out. They had to keep the fire going on the altar, okay? Hold on, baby. We'll get questions at the end. So, it was a continual sacrifice. So, again, Yahuwah is so told because Yahuwah is a chad. So, a lot of this stuff, we are more actually I already... Brought it out. I guess just the most I just like, well, say it to the children too. So it's the same, <laughs> you know, he's, he's so told. So um, this is Romans 12, 1. I don't think I put the um, reference here, but um, it has to be, a, you have to have a continual sacrifice. And Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Allah, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice 
holy, acceptable to Allah, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world. So this is what it would look like. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Alua. So what's an example of not being conformed to this world? Okay, Mari. And then I want one of the Benayim or by note to answer. So the example is like, don't be like, if you're in the truth, like don't get distracted and do what the other, uh, and do what the heathens do because that that's going to get you to go to hell. And there it is. All right. And we had another example. Uh, another example. Esther, you had something. Fasting, okay, yep, fasting. Fasting definitely helps to also renew your mind. All right, yes, Takaya? So when you get distracted, don't go away. Okay, when you get distracted, don't go away. Okay, Yadin? I was gonna say praying. Yeah, praying is another example of not being conformed to this world. So these are things that, that the scripts say that we need to present ourselves, our bodies as a living sacrifice. And these are ways that we can do it. Any more by note or benign? Uh, um, Esther, by Esther? Committing to the feast day. She said committed to the... F and keeping the commandments. Yes. Any Benaim? And then I see you, Neon. Bena, any more Benaim? Jungle? Okay. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Nekum Yahoo? Yeah. Committing to righteousness. Committing to righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nathaniel. Um, like not play, hanging out with your friends on Shabbat, but keeping Shabbat rather than going out with your friends. Hallelujah, that's right. Keeping Shabbat rather than going out with your friends. Sh uh, I'm sorry, Niana then Shannon. Niana then Shannon. Oh, he said what she was going to say? Well, it's hot. Hallelujah. Not watching the videos that the other nations make, like their music videos and their dances on TikTok? Can. She said, not watching the music video. Well, y'all heard it on the mic. Not watching the music video. I'm so used to repeating what you say. But yeah, hallelujah. Anybody else have an example? And these are things that we do what? Continually. Continually. Because that fire on the altar never went out. By Esther. Dying daily. Dying daily. What do you mean by that? Uh, I mean, not giving in to the lust of your flesh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hallelujah. Come. All right. Let's go to the next. Okay. It's interesting that with fasting, um, fasting cleanses out your liver and your kidneys. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Because fasting is a type of a sacrifice. Uh, hallelujah. All right, so what is this? What's this a picture of right here, y'all? One, two, three. The altar, right, and it had fire on it, of course. This is a picture of the altar. Now, another interesting thing that I noticed in the Torah portion was that they sprinkled something on the altar that came from the animals. What was it, Yadin? It was blood. It was blood, right. So they sprinkled the blood from the animals on the altar. Now, I don't think they had a, a, a cup, convenience store cup or nothing like that. But 
<laughs> yeah, so uh, I don't think they had it in a cup, but they actually sprinkled the blood from the sacrifice on the horns and on the side of the altar, okay? So uh, I think that that's, a real, that's something that really stood out to me as I was reading this Torah portion. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So again, it was the blood of the sacrifice. So if you look in Leviticus chapter 8, verse 15, which Moray actually talked about that too. So hallelujah. Um, it says, and Moses killed it, talking about the bull. Then he took the blood and put some on the horns of the altar, all around with his finger, not a, a cup from the store, um, and purified the altar. I thought that was interesting that the blood actually purify the altar. And this word right here is very interesting too, which we probably have to get into um, a little bit later, just the, the Hebrew definition of the word. Um, because it... Uh-huh, you got some more? Kata. So you're, for the benot, um, the nida is purification for the woman. And that's associated with blood. Same as um, the time, a period of purification after the woman has a child. Great point. Hallelujah. Yes. Nekam Yahu. Okay, don't give it away yet. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. I know you already got it. Don't say it. Well, hallelujah for being a chad. But you can say it when I ask, okay? Because I'm going to ask. Yadin? I had a question about, like, what, like they got the blood out the animal, but like, did they have it like in something, and then they, like dip their fingers in it, and then like sprinkle it? Y yes. Yeah, yeah. They actually put the um, blood on the altar with their fingers. So, I know that image probably. <laughs> Threw some of y'all off, but they actually put it on there with their fingers. Okay, so I'm gonna finish reading. It says they purify the altar and purify the altar, and he poured the blood at the base of the altar and consecrated it to make atonement for it. So what does consecrate mean? Okay. Um okay, Zuri. Set apart. Right. Consecrate means to set apart. Right. So that blood was used to purify and also to set apart the altar. So him, the priest putting the blood on the altar actually reminds me of a certain feast day. OK, that where you had to put blood onto something to actually set it apart. Mm. Mm. Uh, Nekum Yahu, what feast day is that? Go ahead. Passover. Passover. Hallelujah. All right. So if you look at Exodus chapter 12, verse 13, it says, Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So them actually putting the blood on the doorpost made the, the angel of death pass over them. Okay, what's the Hebrew word for Passover? Pesach, right. So it made the angel of death Pesach. So it actually covered them and protected them. Yes, okay, Zuri. The Egyptians didn't put um, blood on the doorpost, um, so their son got killed. Correct. Yes. So the reason, so I think the reason why his son got killed is because that he was, because that Yahuwah was uh, harming him, and because that he was harming his people and trying to do evil to them. Mm. Mm. Okay, great point. All right, so, no, no, Yasha, no, it's not Yasha. Yasha don't have this. <laughs> Hallelujah, Yasha. All right, so the blood was put on the doorpost, just like the blood was put on the altar, but it was 
put on the altar to consecrate it, right? So the blood was also put on the doorpost to set aside those houses and to say, okay, the angel of death, you can't come, you can't come in here. You need to pass over this house. I just thought that that was so interesting. And that blood itself, which sometimes we could be seen as, you know, not clean, like um, Maura Imam Met was talking about, you know, like with the Nida and things like that. But it's actually a sign of purification, a sign of life. Yes. And consecration. So, hallelujah. All right. Um, oh, yeah, just click. So, the Passover, yep. All right. So, this is a, just kind of an image of the hyssop and the blood being on the door, put on the doorpost with the hyssop. So, some of the sacrifices were burnt up fully, right? That was an Ula offering for Yahuwah. And some of them were eaten, just like the Passover lamb that was eaten. Okay, so now this is another thing that stood out to me in the Torah portion. Let me go to the next one. What happened if someone eats the sacrifices while they're unclean? Who remembers? Shannon? They will be cut off. So if you eat the sacrifice while you're unclean, you'll be cut off. Leviticus 7.20 says, But the person who eats the flesh of the sacrifice of the peace offering that belongs to Yahuwah, while he is unclean, that person shall be cut off from his people. All right, so we're going to look at kind of what's an example of what that looks like. Some things that Yahuwah says is unclean. We looked at this last week. Do you guys remember 2 Corinthians 6, 16 through 18? Who can give me 2 Corinthians 6, 17? Who remembers that? It was a memory verse, Hebrew Academy. Therefore, okay. All right, so it that's okay. So it says, therefore, well, I'll just read the whole thing, and then when I get to that point, I'll highlight it. Verse 16, and what agreement has the temple of Alua with? idols for you are the temple of the living alua as alua has said i will dwell in them and walk among them i will be their alua and they shall be my people therefore come out from among them and be separate says yahuwah do not touch what is unclean and i will receive you I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says Yahuwah Sabaoth. So Benaim and Benot, what is, what is this saying that it looks like to be unclean? If you're looking at, at uh, verse 16 and verse 17. I'm going to see if anybody else has anything, Nekom Yahoo. Anybody who's not answered. Okay. All right. Nikum Yahoo, go ahead. Um, celebrating other idols. Other idols. What does idolatry look like? Like practically, what would you say? Yes, Shannon. Say it again. Mm, so she says in Christianity, they twist the true meaning of Christmas. Yes. They give each other presents. Mm-hmm. Instead of, yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, like the golden round, when they made the golden round. Oh, yeah. It's when they put things before Yahuwah. There it is. Idolatry is when you put anything else before Yahuwah. So Yahuwah is one. Yahuwah is first. Okay? So that's what this is saying. Don't put anything before Yahuwah. Okay? Be separate. Because if not, you can become unclean. And if you, try, and if you become unclean, you have something before Yahuwah, and you want to come and bring a sacrifice. Actually, Moray was talking about that too. You want to come and bring a sacrifice, and you're unclean, what does it say happens when you try to sacrifice when you're unclean? You'll be cut off from among your people. So 
you have to be careful about that. Make sure you're not unclean bringing sacrifices. Okay, I think that was the last one, and I just had questions. Yep. All right, so who was ordained as a priest with his sons, everybody? Uh-uh, yeah, come on now. One, two, three. All right, hallelujah. And who is their forefather? All right, so what does it mean to sacrifice something? To give up something for something that you consider more worthy, okay. And what did the priest do with the blood of the sacrifice? Sprinkled it on the altar, right? What feast day is coming up that also has to do with blood? Pesach. And what happens if you eat the sacrifice while unclean? You get cut off. Hallelujah. I think that is all. All right. And I don't know if we have time for questions, so I'm not going to ask that question. I'm just going to give the mic back to Moray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs>